This is a drill, and I mistakenly left it outside in the rain, so the results... Well, let's just say the variable speed doesn't work anymore. So today, I'm gonna show you how to fix a drill that you can't control the speed precisely. Most drills can be fixed in about the same way. If you're new to the channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. All main parts will be linked in the description. And let's get started. Now the first thing that comes to mind when an electronics get exposed to moisture is to submerge it in rice for a few days. After doing so and having some fun with the rice and waiting 48 hours for all the moisture to be observed, let's see if it worked. As we can see, the speed control still doesn't work, which means it has permanent damage. So what I'll do next is remove the battery from the drill and have a look inside to see what part is damaged. I'm using its brother the impact driver. The first thing we can see is some rust on the motor surface which doesn't affect the ability to speed control the drill. But what can affect the speed control is the big end channel MOSFET mounted to a copper heatsink. So what I'll try is unsolder the MOSFET and of course add labels to remember where the wires go and then solder on a slightly smaller MOSFET with similar properties. To my disappointment it still doesn't work which can only mean one thing, the actual trigger is broken. Luckily for me, after doing some research, I found an exact replacement, which also comes with a new MOSFET for about 40 bucks, including shipping. Once it arrived, I put it right next to the original one to make sure it looks the same. Here we can see it comes with a positive and negative wire going to the battery and a white and black wire for the LED, two male connectors which will be going to the motor and a switch to change direction. And now that we did that, I'll remove the old trigger and replace it with a new one. After hooking up most of the wires, I realized that the LED from the drill is directly hardwired to the trigger. So, I just chopped it at the right length and soldered it together. I'll also add some fresh thermal paste to the copper heatsink since it hasn't been changed for over 5 years. While the drill is already open, I'll add some fresh grease to the gearbox to lengthen its life. Now I'll just close it up. And then give it a test. Well... It works. I'm able to adjust the speed precisely by pushing the trigger harder or softer. But since drills are normally under load pretty much all of the time, I'll take a few different sized drill bits and drill through a piece of 2x4 and measure the temperature at the end. If it doesn't work as it should, then we might see some smoke coming from the drill. We'll start with a 6mm drill bit. Easy, no problem. Going up to 10 mm and still working with second gear. Once again, going through and through with no problem. Going up to 13mm, it still works well, but since I'm starting to get some kickback, I'm gonna clamp it down to the table instead of holding it in my hand. 
I'll also set the drill to first gear to give it an easier time. The final drill bit or largest drill bit I have is 60 millimeters or 5 8 inch. And as we can see, it drilled through the wood with minimal struggles. But the question is, how hot has it become? When measuring it with my infrared thermometer, I'm getting just under 90 degrees Fahrenheit in the motor's area, and under 100 degrees in the brush's area, which is a normal temperature for drills. If you like this video, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and consider supporting me through Patreon where you can have early access to my new videos. Also, because you made it this far, be sure to check out this video because I think you'll like it.